standing here. No, but thank you for that. That's very good scarf, it turns out. He was a big, strong, dangerous man. Wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Fast as well. I don't know why he hit me so hard. I don't know what old Chael ever did to that guy. But he, uh, <laughs> You sure felt like laying in there. It, it, you said you were, didn't know what you were going into against a very natural heavyweight. You know, he's not the biggest looking man in the world. But people say he's freakish when they roll with him. Or did you find that tonight that, he was, that you were really in there with a genuine heavyweight? Yeah, explosive. I would call him explosive. Yeah, like with his punches, there wasn't a ton of setups. They just came and they came hard. And even on the ground, I had uh, some good positions on him. He would just explode. It wasn't uh, necessarily technique based, but. It was impressive. He was, he's an impressive athlete. And has anyone ever done that to you on the ground? Not maybe about Randy or people like that? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. I don't think I've ever been ground and pounded like that. I thought there was opportunity there. Um, I was covering up, and I thought that he was uh, I thought he was slowing down. Whether that's accurate, this is what I thought. I thought he was slowing down a little bit. And the referee warned me. He said, if you, if you don't move, I'm going to stop this. But I didn't think he would because they were going into my hands. I thought I was blocking them. I thought I was having a rope adult moment. I thought I was, I was luring him in. That was a bad strategy, it turns out. That was a bad plan. You seem to like taking a lot of the risks, riverboat gambling style, the spinning elbow against Anderson, and then now the, the dive roll and trying to roll him over to an RNC. Is that some stuff you regret, trying to take those gambling risks? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah, when they don't work, yeah, I think I regret them a little bit. The. Uh, the dive roll, I was going to lose that position anyway. So maybe that's a little bit less than the other example you gave. I was going to lose that position. I was falling over the top. So I tried to tuck his chin real fast and go. I used to do that move all the time in college. Uh, and I always got it. But uh, I missed it tonight. I rolled right over. Chelsea saw on Twitter that Fedor gave you a higher track suit. Yeah. What did he say to you and what was that exchange like? Yeah, so that was a very cool moment for me. In, in wrestling, that was tradition. You you would you would we would change. We would we would trade uh, trade gear after the match, and it was always a big deal when the Americans wrestled the Russians, and it was rare, and it was uh, it was an exciting moment. So anyway, uh, yeah, he gave me his, his his outfit. I thought that was that was very nice. I had nothing on for him back. I I, uh, I, I guess I owe him an outfit. Yeah. But it was it was very sweet. Call it free, promo. Yes, he can have yes he can have that yes for sure. <laughs> So can you. Anybody can have that. <laughs> you took it from wardrobe. You liked it. I didn't know why I stole it on principle, so they didn't do that to somebody else. <laughs> yes, I was helping I was helping the next guy. Chill, this week you said you like being the bad guy. You're the snake with blue eyes. Candy-coated poison. You, you like to talk trash, <laughs> but with Fader, you seem to tone it down a little bit and very complimentary. Why the big change? Well, I don't talk trash. I talk truth. I, I don't manufacture conflict. If it's not real, I, I won't say it. If it comes out of my mouth, I mean it. And there's a lot of guys in the sport I do not like, and um, I think that's a unique thing about this sport. I think it's relatable to other people. I think everybody probably works with somebody in the office or the job site that if they could get away with it, they'd fight. <laughs> I happen to be in a business where I can. But... Um, Fedor seemed like a gentleman. I, I didn't have a, a, an Ill, any ill will towards him. I think he's a good competitor with a good career. I wanted to beat him really bad. I wanted to have that one. And uh, and that was that. It was from a competitive nature. Uh, and there were three called the greatest heavyweight of all time tonight. Uh, coming out of the ring, do you feel like you want to stay in this weight class or do you want to return to two or five? Yeah, I think we'll see what happens. I mean, you know, if they want to do a loser's ball and play this thing all the way out till third, like the Olympics, um, <laughs> You know, that maybe we do that, but I don't know. That's up to Scott Coker. If, if you ask me what weight class I'd rather be in, I think the 205 is more appropriate. But, um, you know, there's guys that need to fight there, too. I, I don't know. I, I just look ahead to this. I love the tournament. I, I'm so excited about it. I'm glad the welterweights are getting a chance. I hope other guys get a chance. It's from a competitive standpoint. It was really great to be part of it. But um, we'll see. I just, Ryan Bader and, uh, and Fader, that's a really interesting match. It's an interesting match. I think the Bader's going to be, well, I might have shown him. I might have shown him some blueprints just in the moments of success I had in there tonight to at least let him know where, where he should try to get this fight. So let's see how that plays out. But for now, it's it's Fedor's night, not mine. Here you said earlier this week that you think you're the number one contender. I think mean, you have to ask Scott about that. He didn't disagree at all. So you feel like there's a title shot waiting for you there when Fedor and Fedor are done? I think there could be some opportunity. I, I don't feel that it's appropriate to make a call out tonight um, because it's not my night. But, um, yeah, I am ranked number one at light heavyweight, and I, I did think I was going to see Bader in the finals of this tournament. Uh, but let's see how it goes. I, I, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to, to step in front of someone tonight. You have the Anderson Silva job challenge, some of the greats. What does it mean to you to say that you 
one of these legends, and if there's something that separates them that does make them special, unique from every other one. Um. <coughs> Hmm. The first part of the question, I never appreciated that. And maybe I should appreciate it, but I never did. I came from a wrestling background. Yeah, you took on everybody. Anybody that showed up on a weekend, you took them on. 45 minutes apart. Four and five and six guys in one day. So I guess that is unique, and uh, I appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, having the opportunities to try different weight classes. And they always want to talk about who the pound-for-pound pound grade is, but I, there's nobody with the balls to go into different weight classes. I, it's, it's not even a question who the pound-for-pound pound best is. There's only, one, there's only one guy willing to do it. A sport full of chickens. So, uh, I appreciate that. I also fought George St. Pierre in a basement in L.A. one time, so you should add that to the list. <laughs> George. George. Joe, you've got a very prominent broadcasting career, you know, across lots of platforms. Um, you know, you haven't won tonight. But is there any thought about you, you are going to continue fighting or not? Does it enter your head at all? Um, no, not not really. I mean, I have some other goals I'd like to achieve. Uh, you know, I, I, I really looked up to what Randy was able to do and be able to extend his career. I'd like to extend mine. Mm -hmm. But it, it won't be my choice. It's never been my choice. Eventually, you know, Coach Clayton will come up and say, we're done. Then we're done. All right, and we are done. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> but no